All right, YouTube, I think I've worked out the kinks. This is like my fourth take on this, so I might be a little a little less patient than I was in my previous take, takes here, but uh, this is this week's painting update. I should say the second one for this week, actually. Uh, did the 15 millimeter stuff earlier in the week, and now I got 28 millimeter ECW stuff on the table in front of us. Um, so this is the first half of a 36 man unit of commanded shot. I painted it up up as Montrose Irish. They're not really going to be Montrose Irish. I'm going to have them be one of the Irish regiments uh, that came across in the middle of the war uh, when King Charles was able to bring over some of his forces from Ireland to go fight uh, in the actual English Civil War that was going on. Uh, so yeah, I got these guys. Uh, they painted up really nicely. These were courtesy, or I should say the majority of them were courtesy of the Yankee Wargamer. He reached out to Holy Diver, said, hey, I got this entire Scott army. Do you want it? I can't paint it. And uh, Holy Diver graciously accepted. <clears throat> and he's painted the rest of the army. This is the only unit I chose out of that pile to paint. Uh, Holy Diver was just too overlogged, and I was like, well, I really need another unit of commanded shot. Uh, so I took this unit. Now, what is funny is that um, this is what I... Th oh, man. Am I not tall enough? Oh, no. Oh, no. Come on, baby. Maybe if I push all the miniatures to the side here. I'm sure that what the box set was here. This is what I... Th Oh man, it's like just not tall enough. Well, shucks. Hmm. Might have to just rotate the camera here. This is what I thought I we were getting here. So, I thought it was going to be a 24 miniature set of, you know, the pike and shot. Now, these this box set only has four pikemen in it to represent the Irish that came over primarily with firearms. They didn't have pikes, and they had to slowly integrate pikes into their formations because in Ireland they weren't facing a lot of cavalry, so they didn't need pikes. They were mostly firearmed uh, infantry, and uh, but they had to integrate some pikes as the campaigns went on. Uh, inside this box was actually 30 miniatures. He had 24 musketeers, and then he had the four metal pikemen. I chose not to build the pikemen. Probably see if Holy Diver needs them for his army. He's always needing pikemen. But I did use all of the uh, the musketeers, and there was like a couple of the command figures were missing out of it, so I bought another command pack. I think some of the musketeers he had in here were from Foundry. So he had the ones from the Warlord box that this came from, and then he looks like he added some Foundry ones in there. A little, little weird going on, but I ordered six more Foundry musketeers in the loading pose, and then I bought a command group for it to bring me up to 36. So, we'll rotate back here. That was the box art. Thank you, Yankee Wargamer. I will paint the other 20 in the next coming week, and then uh, this will be the last unit to finish off what I got for my army so far. Well, I should say I have like about six or seven casualty figures I need to paint as well for my markers. Uh, so yes, yeah, so this is what we got here. I'll show off some of the good ones. A uh, little note on how I painted these guys. I more or less matched the box art. And uh, so that means I did these guys with the gray, the light gray, white trousers, uh, green jackets. I did two variations on the green. I did one with the dark forest green and then the lighter baby puke poop green right there. Um, not a whole lot to them. I did, a, I did an ink over the dark green one, the green ink, and then I highlighted. And then on the, the lighter green, brown green ones there, I did a Agrax Earth, nah, nope, I did Strong Tone. I did Army Painter Strong Tone and then did a highlight over it. Um, and just to add in a little bit more variation, I decided to do a few guys with butternut trousers and then a couple guys with butternut jackets to kind of represent their worn, less uniform appearance. So show off a couple here. big ass hands out of the way a 
I was just uh, bragging, there we go, about how this camera auto focuses better than my actual camera. So I did a couple blonde there. That's one of the foundry ones, I believe. The proportions are just a little bit different. This is one of the warlords. This guy's holding a rock. I like him. Pretty cool. Uh, I will show, I think this is my best attempt at a tartan yet. I really like the way that tartan came out. I like how he's barefoot too, it's pretty cool. These guys aren't completely done. I still need to finish the drum, the feather, and the final, final, final skin highlight. So yeah, pretty cool. I really do like how the tartan turned out. Here's the other guy with the tartan of this group. His didn't turn out quite as well. I made the lines a little bit thicker than I wanted to. It's really hard to paint those really thin lines. But uh, yeah, he turned out good, all else considering. He's blonde. I did do the other guy as a ginger. Uh, and this is one I bought. So on eBay, there's a guy selling miniatures, ECW miniatures, no brand. I think they're his own home, homespun brand. And I, I, I just needed a command group. I didn't want to wait for anything to come from the UK, so I just bought these. And they actually suck. The Pfeiffer is okay, um, but the, the commander, trash. He has, like, uh, midget arms. Like, really, really bad. I don't even want to use them. Like, I'll show him off. He's still in the white here. But, like, look at those arms. He has little tiny arms. He has, like, little T-Rex arms. It looks so bad. And I just can't use them. I, I can't. I can't. Like, his arms don't even extend past his belt line. If he was the... So, I'm probably not going to use them. Um, I, this guy was barely usable. It's like, he has these weird-looking trousers on. His, his gear is weird. His musket barely, barely looks like a musket. I don't know. I don't like him. But I got to use some of them to complete this unit. Here's the Warlord drummer here. He looks good. Uh, but yeah, that's these guys right here. Uh, so I got 20 more to paint, and then this unit will be done. That'll bring the total ECW army count up to about 250 I believe um, been working on it for about 10 months um, really started working on it again in February February 1st of this year um, so not bad at all uh, if I hadn't painted the 15 mil German stuff I'd already be done with it but to finish the army I got something in pretty cool my first time getting flags in I've never bought flags before I've never done an army with flags before this will be the first period here. Oh, I'm gonna have to shift the camera again. Alrighty. Flags of war. There we are. That's the King's Banner right there. Um, I'm gonna use it for my King Charles command base and then I might use that cavalry uh, cornet banner type deal there, that standard for the King's lifeguard cavalry maybe a little ahistorical there um i think the lifeguard cavalry had their own standards and then when they were escorting the king because the life the king's lifeguard cavalry was his escort unit uh they would have that banner only in the presence of the king though but i'm just going to go ahead and model them with it on uh because i didn't buy actually buy king's lifeguard cavalry standards so I'm just I'm gonna take a little bit of his, some historic liberty there, and just do it like that. Um, I know at Nasby, the the king wanted to to charge in with his cavalry with his his king's lifeguard uh, contingent there and just throw himself into the into the last the last fray there because all hope was indeed lost. He did not do that. His uh, his attendants and his counselors did not let him do that i think he should have i think dying at nasby at the head of his cavalry would have been a hell of a lot better than having his head cut off by oliver cromwell uh a couple you know a year or two later 
you know, in 1748. Oh no, don't fall, don't fall. I'm using my cell phone and I don't have a cell phone uh, thing. So I'm like Jerry rigging stuff. Uh, but yeah, I've always, I've always found it fascinating about these last stands uh, these historical last stands of, of leaders. Um, the first one that comes to my mind is the Battle of Adrianople when Valens, you know, when uh, the Goths, <laughs> he knew the gig was up and his army was being destroyed and he decided he was going to go out with his troops and he took off his cloak and marched into battle with his infantry and he died. Uh, there was some confliction there. Some people said he was able to escape and the Goths burned him out in a barn or some dumb shit, but... I like to believe he died. He literally took off his purple cloak and just balled out with his fucking troops right there. Um, the, the the other famous one, the other famous last valiant effort from a national leader that didn't happen was probably Napoleon Bonaparte at Waterloo. He uh, he wanted to go in with his old guard, and his his aide de camps refused to let him do it. They convinced him not to. Also probably better than him dying of of the flu on a little tiny island a couple years later like you know the 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 folk hero he could have been if he had just went out with his old guard in one final valiant charge because they were all willing to die for him uh but he didn't do that either did king charles but the rest of the flag nonetheless here are the rest of the flags um these are for the marquis of winchester's regiments I actually don't have any of these units, but I do want to get another uh, couple units of, of commanded shot. So that's what these are going to be for uh, the units down the road. These are going to be for my two units of Prince Rupert's blue coats. I have one unit of uh, pike and shot and one unit of commanded shot. That's going to be for them. Uh, these are going to be for Newcastle's guys. I also have two units of them, one of command, uh, one of pike and then one of pike and shot. So that's going to be for those guys. I got Lord Hompton's guys. Um, now, I only have one regiment of Lord Hompton's guys, but I'm, I'm honestly probably going to get another unit commanded shot for him. The King's Lifeguard Regiment. So, I'm, I, uh, I don't have this unit either, but I am going to get a Pike and Shot Regiment and do them up in the King's Lifeguard Standard, and they're going to be like really nice. Probably going to be front rank stuff. We got uh, cavalry standards for guys who fought with the Marquis of Winchester and Prince Rupert. So there's four there. I um, And that's why I don't want to have to order flags again because I have to come from the UK. And so uh, I have three units of cavalry right now and I want to get another unit of King's Lifeguard and then maybe another unit of Carabiner or A type cavalry. And so that'll bring me up to five units of cavalry. So... I have four standards here. Plus, if I use the, uh, you know, the the cavalry style standard from the King's set for the King's lifeguard, that'll give me all I need. And then we got Lord Ashley's regiment. I have not painted these guys yet, but I will. I have them planned. And then we got the last, but certainly my favorite. These are the flags for the Irish that I just showed off. And these are some cool looking flags. So this is for one of the Montrose Irish Brigades. I don't know the actual lineage of these uh, and in the, in the history of these brigades of when they came over and who they fought for. I just really like the way these flags looked. So this Irish unit is getting these flags. I don't know if these are guys that fought in the West that fought under Montrose too or fought only under Montrose. Um, I don't know. And Holy Diver actually painted the rest of that Irish force as Scott Coventers. So I'm painting these guys as Montrose guys, and then he's doing his as Coventers. Because he has a Royalist army, so it'll tie better in with the theme of his army. And these guys will fit more with the theme of my army. So I think the, the Coventers were known for wearing gray, uh, wore gray uniforms primarily. Uh, nothing is absolute in this time period, certainly. Uh, so yeah, so that's uh, that's this month's painting update. Uh, if the audio quality is crap, I'll revert back to the old camera system. But uh, just as a note, I think I'm going to update my production value a little bit here. Uh, I'm going to make this. I'm going to get a uh, a white box 
to do more photographing and photography work, maybe some painting tutorials. And then I'm going to get a, I think if the camera, if the cell phone works out good, like I think it is, I'm going to get an actual tripod for the, for the camera, for the cell phone camera. So until next time, guys, keep painting and thanks for watching.